Good evening, I'm Emily, the Jet Setting Fashionista, and I am so excited to be here tonight for a champagne tasting with Bia Cart Salmon, and um, we're gonna be pairing that with sushi from Hana Sushi out of Sonoma and also from Pabu San Francisco. Chef Ken Tominaga is the chef of both restaurants. So let me just invite Chef Ken to join us and Clement from Billy Cart Salmon. They're actually together at the restaurant. So stay tuned for this exciting event. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, this is always the fun part when we invite um, the others to screen. Anyway, um, as you probably know, we are drinking, this is like the unveiling of the Biacart Salmon Brut Retoner. Oh, there they are. Hello, gentlemen. <laughs> Hi everybody. Hi. Good good evening. Good evening. I I'm so excited. So let me just introduce you both to the audience. Um, those of you that do not know Chef Ken, here is Ken, and um, he is at his Hana Sonoma restaurant, which I was just at earlier, picking up my delicious sushi. I'm going to give everybody a sneak peek, and then. Um, Ken is joined by my friend Clement from Bia Cart Salmon. Those of you might have seen an Instagram live we did together. What was it like week two or three of shelter in place, Clement? It was at the beginning of COVID. Um, we were at the we were way ahead of the game on Instagram yeah. lives. I feel like nobody was doing them when we started. Yeah, you're you're you're, the, you're a trendsetter, Emily. You know. I, I said we. I, I couldn't have done it without you guys. We did a Bia Cart uh, rosé. That was a lot of fun. So yes. where shall we start? So Ken, do you want to tell everybody about your restaurant for those that don't know and a little bit about your background? Hi, so I'm, uh, I'm doing uh, uh, this Hana. We opened 1990 and uh, 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 dry. We just turned 30 year here. And wow, uh, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, yeah. <laughs> we, you know, I suppose I could do like a big party here, but it's just, uh, you know, you know, this uh, happens. So I go, we skip everything and the fun things right now. But in a different, you know, we like to do like a next year sometime, you know, everything comes yeah. back. And then, uh, uh, yeah, so like uh, I moved from Tokyo to direct to Sonoma County. So uh, we love, you know, around this area. But, you know, uh, people keeping asking, why you open restaurant in uh, this weird location? But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I like Sonoma County. So, yeah, you know, so, I love Sonoma County. Yeah. It's so beautiful. The good wine, you know, good people, good produce, good seafood, good meat, you know. This is a perfect uh, serving uh, real Japanese food here. Yeah. In, you know, area. But you have the best of both worlds because you're also the chef at Pabu San Francisco. So you get to be in the city and in Sonoma. Yeah. So, you know, Chef Michael is uh, one of my customers here for a long time. So uh, as soon as like, uh, my kids grow up, I have extra time to spend in a more adventure. And then uh, that's why I started, uh, you know, uh, Chef Michael to do new, you know, like a, a new adventure, you know. So yeah. I, I really, you know, uh, enjoy what I'm doing right now. Yeah, well, Michael's awesome. I don't know if you saw, but we did an Instagram live together a couple months ago when they were launching all their carryout menus. Um, it was Michael and Adam. They were in Vegas together. So yeah, you're, you're part of such an amazing team. How lucky. Yeah. So, oh, how long have you been at Pabu? Pabu, uh, first one we opened at the Baltimore and then the before San Francisco. Yeah, San Francisco maybe come to the eight year, I believe, you know? And so yeah. before that, like uh, first Pabu maybe 10 years ago in the Baltimore. We yeah. now a year, year and a half. Then we closed down that one. And then we uh, moved to like uh, uh, San Francisco. That yeah, sounds so, about right because I've I've been in San Francisco eight years, and as long as I can remember, Pabu was always here. <laughs> yeah, it's about eight years. I, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. So great Clement, um, we're we're so lucky to have you as well. Maybe we can zoom over to Clement. Um, yes. Yeah. So we're we're doing everything uh, manually here. It's uh, oh manually. okay. <laughs> uh, um. Yeah. Well. <laughs> In case, in case our viewers do not know, maybe you could tell them about the new release wine that we are unveiling this evening, the Brut Natur. Yes, so uh, my name is Clément. Thank you, Emily, for having us. 
it's, you're always it's, you're always a pleasure to be with, even well, virtually. You too. Even virtually. Um, and um, yeah, so I've been representing the Vidika family for about eight years now. Um, I was based in New York for a long time, moved to California and San Francisco a couple of years ago, and uh, I'm, I'm really blessed to to represent you know one of the most iconic. Uh, an historical estate in the region of Champagne. Yes. Uh, for I second that because I've been there and I met I the family. Can. So I'm as big of a fan as you are. And so you're right. Tonight we're releasing um, for the first time in California the Brut Nature, which is um, a brand new wine for us. We just arrived in. Uh, I'm not through with our report, Chef, just so, just so you know. Um, well, can we take a taste as you're talking? Because I have two glasses in front of me and this is really hard. <laughs> Cheers. 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 And mm. so I just want to show a little bit of the setup too. And the uh, chef will talk about it mm. in a minute. But Lovely. We have, we have a nice little setup. We have a tasting for the Brut Nacho here. So this is a Kim Medai. It's a, a golden eye snapper. And then, uh, you know, Wild Year Hotel. And uh, from uh, uh, Himi, Japan, like a Hokkaido fresh scalp. And yeah, this is a Santa Barbara, you know, uni. And then Ooh. we have a uh, wild uh, bluefin tuna from Mexico, you know, fatty, medium fatty tuna, and then uh, uh, king salmon. And then also, uh, this is a spot prawn from Alaska, then a uh, fresh boiled octopus. Wow. wow. So you've got a lot of different, like, countries and states represented on that those two plates. Yes. So That's so cool. So, and then so the, the point for today is uh, for Chef and I to, to really delve into um, champagne and sushi because... I think it's one of the most um, phenomenal pairing there is. Uh, and, you know, sushi obviously is very generic and a lot of things are into the sushi category, but raw fish in general uh, is very delicate. It's very simple. It's all about the ingredients uh, and then some seasoning and chef will talk about that. But the key really is the ingredient and it's the purity and it's the elegance. And champagne has that ability to pair with um, you know, uh, everything. Very, I'm gonna everything, say everything. Because Pretty of the, I think so. Because of the acidity, because of the minerality, because of the elegance of the wines and the brightness, uh, I think you know it goes so well, uh, and it's very versatile. It's, it doesn't overpower. Sushi is very delicate. It needs something uh, elegant that's not gonna over and counterbalance. So that's what's important. Um, and so yes, uh, with Nacho tonight. Um, so first one, it's. That's it's arriving in the U.S. It's um, uh, all three all three grapes from the region of Champagne. It's Pinot Meunier, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay. Yeah. Uh, we used to have a wine, if you know, called uh, Brut, uh, called Extra Brut. Uh, yes, which, I've had it. Which we had for ten years, and uh, after ten years, the family decided to uh, to rename the wine Brut Nature because the last four releases of Extra Brut were already a Brut Nature. Brut Nature means zero uh, dosage, zero mm -hmm. sugar. So it's bone dry. And specifically, it's a wine that's pure, completely naked in a way, very showcasing its, its minerality and its, and, its, and its aromas. And it's, it's designed for food. It's a wine that doesn't over, overshadow. It's very pure and raw. And that's why I think it's great. You know, it's great with caviar. It's great with oysters. But to me, like some uh, salinity, briny, uh, white fish, or something like uni, which we're going to taste here. Uh, I yeah. think is, uh, it's, Can I ask you a question, Clement? So this is zero dosage, but I have to say it still has that beautiful, like, rich creaminess to it, you know? It's not, like, sometimes I feel like zero dosage, like, it's, like, almost too dry for me, but this one I'm still, like, loving the richness. How many years was this aged? So the, the key on this wine, Emily, is that we, we on, on purpose, we don't want to make a brut nature that's too austere because uh, a lot of them can be very aggressive on the palate, Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, Champagne is a very cool climate. You have very dry, acidic wines, and you need those ash to bring the balance. And one way to kind of go around that, obviously, you have a lot of things that you need to consider is obviously the grapes, quality of the grapes, um, et cetera. But one way is always to add sugar. And, you know, some lower quality producer tend to add a lot of sugar to hide uh, a not so great um, uh great to start with but right the, the real key and you pointed out is is the aging uh because you know in champagne what you look for especially when you pair with food is the texture uh is the length 
And that texture, that creaminess, that comes from aging on the leaves. There is no way around it. There is no, there is no other secret or magic recipe. It's time. It's a good old time, right? So. And, and is this an oak? Because I mean, I've been to be a cart. I'll never forget when Florent toured me in his, you know, the, the cellars, and I saw, you know, some of those big oak barrels. Was this aged in oak? No, this has no barrel whatsoever. It's hundred percent stainless. Finished. Yeah, the focus is to the, the goal is to be very straightforward, very focused, high acidity, very mineral, uh, to showcase and let the, the food shine, right? Uh, and so to answer your question, this is aged for um, four years in the cellar, um, when the law in Champagne is 15 months, so much longer aging. And also, and Ken, I'll just finish on that and I'll pass, pass That's to okay. you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the key is... Um, the amount of reserve wines that goes into that. So reserve wine is a concept in Champagne that tends to be um, not talked about enough. And especially that's a luxury and, and a tool that historical house like Vilcar Salmon we, we have because we've been able to, to save and build these right. library wines. It's very expensive to maintain. It takes, it takes space, it takes tanks, um, but it gives the winemaker a, basically a new dimension because in Champagne, you have, if you look at blending Champagne, you have three dimensions. The first one is uh, is the grapes, obviously, you have three grapes. So that's your first layer. Then within each grape, you have different villages. Um, and each village has a different expression of that grape. And then within each village, you have the third dimension, which are the parcels. So at Bilka, we use all three, obviously, because we vinify every parcel separately. But then the, the, the other dimension that you have is the different harvest that you can blend, because it's a, this is a non-vintage. So you have, right. um, you have endless 11, years. Right. You have 11 different years in this point. How um, many? 11. Wow. The base, the base year is 2015. Okay. Um, so can you explain what the base means to people that don't know what that means? Um, so the base is the base harvest. Uh, what if you buy a, a red wine from California, you're going to have a year on the label. It's going to be 18, 17, 16. That's the, the harvest year. So in Champagne, you have wines that have that as well. It's called vintage Champagne. But most Champagne in terms of production are non-vintage. So they're blend of different years. Uh, and the base year is um, what, uh, the, 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 when the wine was bottled and where that made that main harvest uh, is, is consisted on. So in that so case, I was just showing the bottle. Excuse me, Clement. I wanted to show the bottle to the viewers. You guys, if there's no number on the front for a champagne, what Clement's talking about, this is a non-vintage. So every single year when I get this Biacart Salmon Rosé, the goal is that it tastes the same year after year. Whereas if I had a vintage version of it, you know, maybe the 14 would have been a really cold year. So it would have a lot more acidity than the 15 of the vintage. So basically, you know, it's like when you, when you have a still wine, it always has a vintage. It's only, I mean, champagne's the only one that does has non-vintage, right, Clement? It's not the only, but that's really where that concept was in, invented to blend years. And that's the, the an endless resource is to have those reserve wine so a non-vintage always has a little bit of reserve wines but in this mm -hmm. one we have 60 percent of reserve wine so it's extremely high wow and so what it does is the idea is we go deeper we go 10 years deep in this in the in the cellar to bring wines that have evolved a little bit that have aged a little bit and so they're showing a little more muscle a little more texture and body so that yeah it builds, it builds complexity into the wine so that at the end even if we don't have sugar it's it's balanced and on top of that you have the four years of aging which which gives creaminess so that's well no wonder it tastes rich and creamy it, the 60 percent of it's 10 years old <laughs> yeah so that's the key so you have you have a balance between a very focused and clean and almost like nervy and uh and, and, and acidic and and punchy like uh from the zero dosage and then you have all these reserve wines that give you that back palate and that and that texture so and i've talked about wine i'm, I'm hungry chef i know <laughs> let's, let's have shen talk uh, chef so, pen talk about the food so I also want to do a disclaimer. Um, I do not have the same food as Ken and Clement because I'm a very boring eater. I will admit that. <laughs> but um, I took a chance today because Ken suggested that I try the Ken roll. So this is the Ken roll, which I will be trying. And then I have my good old boring California rolls. I'm sure they're going to be delicious because Ken's team made them. But I just wanted to explain if you guys are like, why doesn't Emily's plate look like theirs? That is why. But it'll be fun. So that way, even, you know, non as adventurous eaters can do this champagne tasting it and pairing at home with, you know, more, more, more basic sushi, I'm going to call it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, basically like, uh, uh, 
somebody you uh, pick up today, uh, Kenzero. So Kenzero, Kenzero have a, a shrimp tempura inside and avocado inside and rolled up and put the spicy tuna on the top. And then also like a little bit spicy furikake on the top and the pine nuts. And then also like we put a little eel sauce in the underneath and uh, that makes a little bit sweet. Okay. And then, uh, uh, also, uh, uh, so balance is uh, spicy and then uh, also like uh, uh, in the sushi rice have a little bit uh, uh, of uh, you know, sugar, a little bit of like a salt and then okay. like, uh, rice vinegar inside. So, uh, uh, so they uh, also uh, champagne have a lot of meat now. So that meat now is a uh, uh, matched up, uh, you know, this kind of flavor. And then uh, uh, in the food is uh, sushi is a uh, you know five different kind of a uh, uh, flavor, and then uh, sweet and uh, acidity, and then uh, salty. And then also a little bitter sometimes, okay. and then also umami. That's a five is a, a component to the build up of one piece of sushi. So, uh, so champagne have a uh, lots of mineral, and then uh, that's why they like, got uh, so so good with uh, like sushi. You know, like also like a uh, lot you have over there. So, but if people sometimes eating a sushi with champagne. You know, dips too much like a soy sauce, which like a uh, way over salty. So like yeah. uh, uh, when you eating a uh, uh, sushi and a champagne, I want you to lighter amount of uh, soy sauce. I suggest to the people to you know eat and drink together. And then uh, also like I want the uh, people to try, and then uh, uh, squeeze a little bit of lemon juice, and then uh, also put a little bit like a bodem salt or something. Okay. On the top, the, you know, top the sushi. Let, let, me, let me show, chef. Uh oh! Oh, there yes. we are. Good. I was like, did I lose you guys? I just want to show you. So, so this is oh, a modem uh, salt, and this is a house brand soy sauce, lemon juice, and then uh, this is called irizake, and then uh, also you know sake soy sauce, like a very very Tokyo style old school like a uh, sauce, you know, uh, made by like a uh, uh, soy uh, made by sake. You know, like so a, can you show us how you um, how you would take a piece? Okay, so like a, let's start off like a scallop right here. Okay. So uh, uh, this is the I just uh, this is from Hokkaido scallop. I just uh, one drop. Uh, uh, Hold on, let me. Oh. <laughs> We've got one a lot of action the, movement. Perfect. The, That's a great view, Clement. Uh, one drop the lemon, not too much, and then uh, uh, I have a more lemon salt here, and. Uh, Put a little bit more them salt on the top. I know this is making me really hungry. We've got fans that are saying yum and how so excited they are. I just go for it, okay? Oh, I'm gonna have one with you. Yes. Ken, which should I start first, the Ken roll or the California? Uh, maybe like a uh, start. You know, uh, so this is a dry champagne. And uh, uh, might be good with Kenzo. You know, okay. Kenzo, Kenzo have a more character to it. And then I want you to enjoy the, you know, cut down the fat and spicy and, you know, sweetness, you know. Mm. Beautiful. Scallop, champagne. Delicious. Really good. <laughs> yeah, scallop and champagne is, um, is a classic, you know, pairing. It's, yeah. Um, it always goes really well, but this is scallop to its, you know, more singular uh, approach is really down to the product. And when you have something, something like this, and obviously it would work with many other champagne, it would work with a Blanc de Blanc as well, for instance, something extremely delicate and light. Uh, it wouldn't work with, let's say, a Blanc de Noir. It, it would be too powerful. You need something clean, fresh, elegant, and um, I agree with Chef Ken, um, a lot of people overpower, like, you know, some people put too much sugar in champagne and right. you know, the same way with sushi, people put too much salt or too, too much soy sauce and it, 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 it unbalances the whole thing. 
Um, you want to be subtle, so a touch of salt, a touch of lemon. And uh, that's something that works really well. I think, you know, always a touch of a good lemon when it comes to pairing champagne, it, it just brings the whole dish uh, a touch more and it, it, just, it just clicks together. Um, yeah, I would have never thought of that. Great tip. Yeah. Um, I think I don't, you know, I don't need any like a sugar in the champagne and for you know this kind of pieces too. So this uh, champagne, you know, he will bring in tonight. That's a really works well for you know sushi. It's a yeah. yeah. Well, that was delicious. I love the Ken roll. I'm I'm hooked, Ken. That's gonna be my new order. That in a California roll. And then also again like, in, in Japan, like, it's a it's a we call it, like a sushi shan. <laughs> sushi shan is like sushi and the champagne. Yeah. We pair together, we call sushi sham. Sushi sham. Sushi sham. I love it. Sushi sham. It's like a sushi sham event, you know, a lot, you know. So just like you know, sushi, nice high end sushi bar, like you know, bring a lot of different kind of champagne. So like first course, you know, this champagne. Second course, this champagne. Yeah. I think it's a great, great pairing, you know. Emily. Yeah. Tonight, sushi sham. Sushi sham right here. Game on. I mean, I have to admit, I already refilled my glass. Clement, this is so, so beautiful. It's so yeah. drinkable and easy. I love it. Obviously, so, with the sushi. I'm going to finish and, the sushi. And, Emily, if I may, uh, like, kind of uh, put you on the spot here. When we were planning this, you told me, I don't like extra brew champagne. And, and you're telling me, hey, I'm enjoying to drink it now, tonight. I agree, but I have to say, I think the old extra brute I wasn't as crazy about. So maybe this recipe is just hitting the sweet spot. Mm. Perfect. <laughs> good, good. I'm so <laughs> glad you left it. I mean, <laughs> you know my absolute favorite beer cart is Cuvée Elizabeth, but I mean, you, girl, you can't love every single thing equally, but this one's getting up there with the Cuvée Elizabeth. Oh. Um, or Nicolas. Yeah. Well, both. Not, I love not, them both. Not today. Um, and what I want to say, too, is, um, you know, Bilkar Salmo is a very popular um, champagne house in Japan um, because I think, you know, you have a lot of different styles when it comes to champagne houses. And Bilkar Salmo is always renowned for, for that delicate, elegant, light, fresh style, which really shines with seafood, uh, mm -hmm. really shine with uh, a lot of Japanese food. It, you know, I think it works, some of our wines work really well with ramen as well because it's it cuts through the fat and it's not too heavy. Um, and um, that's why Bilka Salmo, I think, is, is popular in Japan. That's one of the reasons it goes really well with sushi. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's a work really well for simple food, you know. We serve, uh, you eat, eating ingredients and a few kinds of uh, flavors. I can't really see you, Ken. Hold on one second, Ken. I want to see you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, simple food is, uh, you know, much better you know, match the champagne. You know, you know sushi is such a simple thing, you know, just uh, mm -hmm. rice, wasabi, and the ingredients on top. Maybe you can touch, you know, salt, you know, touch soy sauce. That's about yeah. it. So, I mean, uh, it doesn't taste simple. It tastes delicious, but I'm glad you think it's simple. Yeah, it is. So I have a question. Um, sure. What, so I, I sort of want to try the California roll with the same pairing and see how that tastes in comparison. Okay. And what are you guys going to do next? We're going to do uni. 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 Uh, Ooh, wow. That's exciting. Yeah. So uni, uni is very scary for a lot of people, I think. Yes. Um, I, I know the feeling. I think it's one of the best ingredients uh, on earth. So that's from Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara. So local, local uni. Uh, it's one of the best probably. Uh, I think it's the best region in, in, yeah. in the U.S. for, yeah. for, for sea urchin. Yeah. Um, mm. and so uni is, a, you know, it's, it's, this very, it's sea urchin as, as some of you know, but it's, it's very fatty, uh, or at least the, the texture is very creamy. Uh, it's very, uh, it's very dense. It's very, and it's, I don't think it's a wine. It's a, it's an ingredient that's very easy to pair with actually. Yeah. And champagne is, um, and something like a brut nature it's so again, good. because it cuts through, uh, it drives through. Um, that's the type of ingredient that, that it really work with. Uh, it would be, be great, for instance, also on a risotto, like a risotto Ooh. sea urchin on top. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh. We, we so the, are you going to try it with the Brut Nature or both the Brut Nature? Because we haven't even given the rosé any attention yet. 
Yeah, let's let's talk about the Rosen now if you want. Okay, well, perfect timing. My sister is joining in from Evanston, and she said that they're eating pork sushi paired with the Brut Rosé. How interesting. Say it again. <laughs> My sister joined, and she's she's eating pork sushi with the Brut Rosé. What is a pork sushi? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. Maybe is she's that, joking. Is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I never heard of it. <laughs> it's I don't know. Another American invention. Well, most importantly, they're eating something and they have the rosé. So I guess they're just joining in. <laughs> so first of all, if you're drinking rosé, you're doing it right. Uh, so your life is fulfilled. Well done. Uh, <laughs> no complaint. Then if you want to have pork sushi, well, oh. uh, it's up to you. Uh, she corrected. She. <laughs> Chimpe okay. Chimpe goes everything. We've got the rosé well, ready. Gonna pour, I'm going to pour Chef a little bit of rosé. Um, and Emily, do you want to give us your, uh, maybe an introduction on the rosé for you? Because I, I know you're very familiar with it. For, for Yes. Uh, well, when I think of this rosé, I have to say, um, as most of you know, I dine out a lot, well, pre-COVID, and I love to talk to sommeliers. And I have to say, whenever I ask sommeliers what their favorite champagne house is, they always say Beacart. And I was not paid to say this. This is just like a true fact. And I feel like the day after I was at Beacart and met Matthew Beacart and spent some time with, you know, Florent, the winemaker, I was at a restaurant in Paris and they welcomed me with a glass of the Brut Rosé. So I just feel like the Brut Rosé is just like this welcoming champagne that like everybody loves and everybody adores and back to the whole non-vintage conversation it's so great that you know year after year you you know what you're going to get when you buy this bottle and what's the retail come on like 80 dollars yeah 80 to 90 dollars um, yeah for the for the rosé uh, so i think i mean that's my take on it i'm not going to get as technical as you but i just feel like as a consumer this is one of these wines that just everybody loves you can bring it as a gift and you'll be the most popular girl in the room <laughs> Well, thank you, Emily. Um, the rosé is, um, is the one that's dangerously easy to drink. Um, <laughs> so it, it has a lot of different functions and there's a lot of different ways it, uh, it kind of shines. Um, first and foremost, it's a gastronomy champagne and it's a gastronomy rosé. And, you know, way back then, uh, way back when in, um, in the 1950s so this bottle um in, in its shape and in its composition I, and in its spirit uh, i'm gonna very, show everybody the bottle size compared to yeah, the other a very light rosé as you can see and we've always been making rosé at Bilica since the late eight, since the late 1800s it yeah. used to be a much darker rosé and okay. then we, and then we stopped for a while and then we started again in 1952. And um, in 1952, um, that's when um, Jean, uh, Jean Biocart, the fifth generation, uh, so right after the war, when the, the house was, you know, struggling to, to, re to recoup, um, he had an idea with his winemaker to work on a, on a rosé really for gastronomy, which would be much more elegant than most others, uh, much lighter, much cleaner, because Back then, rosé was not really considered a quality wine in Champagne. People were not serious about it. Okay. And uh, it was more like, hey, we have some leftover tanks. Let's make rosé for fun, you know? Right. Um, and, you know, there are a handful of producers that have always been committed to rosé. Bilka Salmon is one of them. Laurent Perrier is another one. Uh, Renard is another one. Um, but we were really uh, cutting edge uh, in creating a style of rosé that was dry, that was clean. And the way it's made, uh, it's made by blending red and white. So we, we, we don't do any skin contact maceration. We vinify a red wine on the side. And we're going to blend. Um, so very old vines of Pinot Noir, very aromatic, very deep in color, deep in fruit. We're going to blend that red wine about 5% to a white wine blend. So 95%, if you look at it the other way, is white wine. It's white juice. So that's why it's very delicate. It doesn't have tannins. And that makes it a, an, an amazing gastronomy friend because it's, a, it's very pure, very precise. Clement, you said 5% Pinot Noir, 95% Chardonnay. So there's no Pinot no, Noir. No. It's 5% it's Pinot Noir red. 
and then 95% white blend. And so in the white blend is mainly Chardonnay. So you have 50% of the overall bottle, give or take, which is Chardonnay. Okay. And, that's, and that's very high for rosé. A lot of rosé are Pinot Noir based. Uh, that's what you get. It's very clean, high acid, mineral up front. And then on the back, you get the berries from that Pinot Noir. But you have all three grapes, Pinot Noir, Meunier, Chardonnay. Chardonnay okay. driven rosé. So these are the two things to know about Bilka Rosé. One, Chardonnay heavy. And two, no skin contact. Blend, blend of old vine and Pinot Noir for the color. So And don't you think the, the color would give away the no skin contact? Because if, if you had skin, it wouldn't it be a much darker red? It would. Yeah, because this is such a beautiful peachy color. Like, I almost want to describe it as salmon, salmon peachy. Yeah, peach skin, salmon. Salmon tends to be confusing with the name salmon, which has no <laughs> connection with the color of the rosé, but sometimes help people remember that we make rosé. Um, but when it comes to gastronomy, you know, all over the world, and specifically when it comes to sushi restaurant, I, I feel like a lot of sushi chefs like to have Bilka Rosé on the menu because... It's extremely versatile with salmon. It's, it, it works well with tuna. It works well with any like kind of red, pink uh, fish that are, that are delicate. Uh, yeah. Not, like, it, it would not work with uni, in my opinion. It does not work with uni. Bilka Rosé is too delicate. But it works Do you guys want to do, do the next yeah. pairing? Yeah, so let's show uh, what... What Ten is going to guide us on. So I just uh, eat uh, Amaebi with uh, this rosé. Yeah, Ken is not waiting for me. He's been eating. Uh, all I just, the oh, I, I just started eating. I'm like smelling it and just, I haven't started much. Okay. So I might be have a, you know, a lot of, you know, a, a full flavor and then uh, inside the mouth after I eat it, you know, stay in a, like a uh, flavor, stay long. But, you know, this uh, rosé have a little bit more like a bubbly in compared to, you know, I can taste more like a uh, more bubble. And then uh, this is Amaebi and uh, Octopus, I had it. Amaebi and then uh, this rosé. And then uh, I, I did uh, get also like a lemon and uh, morning salt here. That's excellent. And then uh, the I'm, salt. Going do, like, uh, I'm going to do like a little uh, uh, toast uh, uh, salmon. So you know, we're gonna, uh, uh... Because this one, after we toast it, you know, like a, uh, it's more fat coming up. So, uh, okay. Torch it. Oh, whoa, wow. Very exciting. We're, we're doing sushi shan barbecue here. <laughs> yeah. I love, uh, you know, champagne and like a torch fish. It's oh, really look at that glaze, food. the heat. It looks incredible. Yeah, it's a cold outside. It is a perfect though. <laughs> okay. So then, uh, uh, so this squeeze lemon. And so then, uh, I think the take here, Emily, is we don't want to mess with Chef Ken when he has the torch in his hand, okay? No. <laughs> but, wow, I wish I had okay, a torch I want, here. I, uh, that I want you to taste it. And, uh, I want you to taste it. And, uh, this champagne and uh, uh, this together. You know, this rosé together. You know, we, let's try it together. Okay. I'm going to do the Ken roll while you guys do that. All right. Wow. Mm. Mm. I think that this uh, like a spicy mayonnaise in and uh, with the California roll and the dip it, you know, that you have over there. <laughs> my, my, yeah, you know, and you know really what the spicy mayonnaise, the rosé sort of softens the spicy mayonnaise, you know, because mm. the spicy mayonnaise has a kick. Wow. This, this I almost forgot amazing. I have the spicy mayonnaise. This is an amazing pairing. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, almost a too perfect to match. <laughs> it's like a, yeah, no, it's... it's a, to go away. What's I that Sorry, I lost my napkin. Steamed salmon, yeah. So, yeah, the, so obviously raw salmon works well. I had never actually done it with a, with a torch salmon. And um, you had a little bit of wasabi in it, right? Wasabi, yeah, but in a, uh, also like I have a medium fatty tuna here. This is torch a little bit. And then... Uh, uh, Dip a little bit here, uh, you know, regular soy sauce. It's excellent. Too. So yeah, the, the, you can feel the, the oiliness, the texture, the from the um, from the melted like torch salmon, and the acidity of specifically the chardonnay from the rosé, and the fact that it's a rosé that's quite dry, because uh, you're at you know uh, eight gram of of sugar. So it has also more 
you know, roundness than than the extra brut. The, the, the brut nature has zero. So we. So don't I just tried the Ken roll back with the brut nature, and I prefer the the Ken roll with the rosé. Oh, Ken's roll with rosé. Yeah, so, it's just it's just like creamier. It just feels like a better pairing. Um, okay. But yeah, that's because of the dosage. So to me, the when when you have like. Um, a roll which has a lot of different ingredients um, and is a little more complex in flavors. When you when you add something like brut nature, brut nature is it has texture, but it's very like boom, like it goes one way and it cuts through. His job is to cut through and go with something very delicate. We had a lot of flavors. The the roundness of the rosé because there is a little bit of dosage um, and because you have red wine and because you have you know more aromatic. Uh, a different aromatic profile. I think it's very interesting. But yeah. um, th this is just to give you an idea of tonight of what you, you can do with uh, with champagne and, and specifically yeah. with your car rosé. So, you know, shrimp and raw shrimp, um, great, works well with scumpy, works well with um, lobster as well. Um, this is octopus. Um, so, you know, you can almost tell by the color, like, you know, these things are like similar color to the rosé and it works well together. Um, you know, like uh, people have an uh, octopus and a sushi and then, uh, you know, the brush, you know, it, I like to put the little oil on top of my sushi as well. You know, my favorite way to eating an octopus, put a uh, little bit of salt and then uh, seaweed actually like a, uh, you know, stay, you know, I'm not a big fan for like a seaweed with champagne. Seaweed? Yeah, seaweed, nori. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, if you can make without nori, you know, even a little bit better, but salt. And then also a little bit white, you know, like a white sesame oil. And then, uh, because, you know, oil and champagne they all together. And so things is done. I really want to do like a, uh, you know, uh, tasting menu, you know, uh, with a, you know, especially like a dinner and then with, you know, uh, with a champagne and a sushi night. Well, and I would love to come to that, Ken, if you do it. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to do that. That would be awesome. We could do like, well, we could, you could do um, with each course, a different champagne pairing. How fun. Yeah. So like, I mean, I drink champagne, but you know, just like a fast grass in the beginning. But, uh, you know, this is a kind of fast experience in uh, doing a uh, champagne and sushi for like uh, each bite and then, it, you know, like uh, in a, sh uh, a drink down the champagne after. I mean, yeah. this yeah. is so exciting. You know, this is a, I mean, what's better than this? You know, that's a, you know, this, I mean, is, this, I think is, this is the best, I think. This is the most exciting Tuesday I've had in a very long time. So thank you guys <laughs> for the excitement. Yeah, Wait, yeah, speaking nice. of excitement, I want to ask you one thing, Ken. We were talking about this today. I'm very excited for our friend Dustin to open the Matheson very soon, which you are going to have a culinary role in. Can you tell us what <laughs> what your what your involvement is in that? Yeah, so uh, uh, we are looking for open March 15th, and then uh, uh, that's the opening day. But just uh, you never know. You know this you right. Know, but, but, so for you know, those. Uh, the those that don't know, the Matheson is a culinary project coming to Healdsburg that my pal right. Dustin Vallette is um, opening, and Ken is going to be in charge of the sushi at one of the one of the floors, or what do you call it, one of the restaurants within the concept. So it's uh, pretty much like a, my sushi, and then uh, Dustin's like a light seafood concept. You know, like a, he want to make a you know really. You know, simple light in you know, uh, seafood dishes. You know, but uh, I used to have a restaurant like that, but just uh, Western cooking. But it's more like uh, people uh, want to eat something light. And yeah. then, uh, uh, so fast forward, we offer like a sushi bar. We do like a nigiri, sashimi, and then a uh, roll. Champagne? Yeah, champagne. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, there's got to be beer cart there. Beer yeah, cart yeah, rosé. If it's a champagne know? bar, there's beer cart rosé. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, then in, uh, we have a side floor we call Loop 6. And then uh, we offer handle bar, pizza. You know, it's a little casual dining up there. Great. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm so excited about it. You know, like uh, uh, it's in a, 
I I like to bring up a more like a Sonoma County like a you know people want to eat something good and people come up to like a Sonoma County everybody you know that's yeah. kind of yeah what was that I think you know? it's going to be wonderful and I can hopefully you'll have the Ken roll on that menu right of course I hope so. <laughs> yeah. No, okay, yeah, good. Yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe I did an Instagram live with Dustin a couple months ago, so maybe when you guys open we'll do something else together again and and share it with the audience. Yeah. Yeah, we you know like Okay. We, yeah, we like you and then the Dustin and the me together again, you know. So he took some and Yeah. And obviously come on, yeah. we need rosé. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Well, good. How are you doing over there, Clement? I'm I'm great. I'm uh, I'm really amazed by uh what I just tasted the um, uh the raw the raw shrimp or the rosé. Again, it's it's yeah. a very, I could almost call it a, like a a lazy pairing because it's so like obvious that it works Simple. together but it's it's just perfection, you know? And sometimes you don't want to overcomplicate things when you have something pure and elegant, you add something pure and elegant with it. Um mm-hmm. that works together but Yeah, and the, the key for this rosé too, Emily, we haven't talked about is, you know, it's been made for a long time. So we've, we've figured out a way of perfecting it. We know exactly which parcels uh, shine in, in terms of rosé making and especially for the, you know, for the red wine. Um, yeah. But it's, it's all about balance. You know, there's a lot of length on the, on the Ocar rosé, which makes it, that's what makes it also a great friend. You know, for gastronomy, you have all these berries and tiny little pomegranates, a little acidic berries popping up and exploding in the back and when you have something like like I mean I love uh I love your your sushi and uh, and, and I love you know sp- Japanese cuisine in general uh because it's it's very simple uh you know in a good way like it's 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 there is no it's not there fussy is, there is no artifice you know it's uh it's like a few a few touches of spices it's like when we do our dosage like we add at the end of the at the end you add the dosa the most it's very important because um you know it changes completely the balance of the wine but it's only one percent of the of the whole thing but that's when same as you add the the soy sauce or the or the lamb the, the lime the lemon juice or the um, or a little bit of wasabi or these are things that completely change the the balance but they don't over power they're just like you know and um mm-hmm. Or rosé has that capacity to go to go really well with uh, with sushi. So I don't know this this was this was fun. So I hope that gives you some ideas on when next time you order sushi, uh, probably to go because that's uh, what we have to do these days. That's kind of a, uh, a at yeah. least in California. That's all that's left to us, uh, at, uh, except Sonoma, where you can still come enjoy some <laughs> outdoor dining, but. Um, you know, if you have a, a good quality sushi around you and, and want to have a good champagne pairing with it. And I think, I think it's, you know, obviously sushi goes well with sake as well. Um, mm-hmm. Chef Ken was telling me, and I agree with him, either you go the champagne route or you go the sake route. But um, I don't think you should mix them uh, in the pairing, right? Yeah, so if, uh, if, we, if you... Uh start off champagne you know, with sake and start with sushi and I think it's a uh, keep going that way. So you know I don't want you know, people to stop oh maybe switch to the sake you know like yeah I, it's not a good idea. You know if you start doing a sake, dry sake, bone dry sake just keep going that way. If you like a mix like a sake and then a, a champagne together champagne. I think it's uh no really go well with <laughs> My yeah. opinion, you know, so um, uh, yes, pick a lane and stick with it is what you're saying. Yeah, in the champagne, you know, like that, uh, it's a it's a beautiful combination. Well, so, I have to that, say, with my with my you know simple simple sushi over here that I did, the California roll was perfect with the brut nature, and then the Ken roll I thought was perfect okay. with the, with uh, the brut rosé. So like oh, I had two perfect sense. pairings. Makes sense. Yeah, the California roll is a little bit more simple. And then also, like, a uh, Ken's roll is a more, like, a duplicated flavor. I think, like, a more, like, a bubbly thing in the rosé. Like, it's a, you know, like, a much more than, like, a 
Do I so Ken, I have a question. I've never yeah. seen a pine nut on sushi. Is that your own personal touch or is that something common we would see in Japan? <laughs> yeah, so we open roasted pine nuts and then we just put on the top one piece. But they did a great job, like just a piece of pine nuts and then uh, uh, change everything. You know, like a um, uh, little sweetness, roasty, you know, like mm -hmm. a, but people sprinkle little sesame seeds and roasty sesame seeds from the top. That's exactly the same idea. You know, uh, pine nuts, you know, this is uh, one of the, my favorite things to eat too, so. So, but Ken, if I went to Japan, would I see a pine nut on sushi there? I don't no. think so. <laughs> so it's your, it's your personal touch, I love it. Yeah, yeah, some people put the peanuts and almond, but that's a too crunchy for me. I mean, pine nuts are nice and soft, and easy go down everything together. That's why I, okay. I, I select that. And also like a little bit oily. So like a, even like a tiny pieces and more flavor. So uh, that's why I pick up uh, the pine nuts myself. Okay, good to know. We're getting a lot of comments about how delicious this looks and how hungry everybody is. Well, you guys, hopefully you got some sushi and were eating along with us, but if you didn't, yeah. I would say order in some sushi and order a little bia cart delivery. God, God knows everybody delivers these days. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have we have half bottles, you know. Oh, I for, yeah, know. we I forgot to talk about that. If, yeah, they have the. If you want to do a little experiment, just get a, a little half. We have we have two wines that come in half bottles. Just do two half bottles for the experiment. And uh, I mean, I'm just being like reasonable. I would not recommend doing half bottle, I would recommend doing a Magnum if I were listening to myself, but, uh, you know. Because honestly, unless you're drinking it by yourself, a half bottle, I wouldn't really share it. Like I would drink that by myself. So if you're having dinner with two, you definitely um, need this bottle because like we talked about, this goes down so easily that, I mean, if you're a real wine drinker like me, you'll probably have two to three glasses of the bottle if you really love it. <laughs> so. So we 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 are lads out you know this champagne for half bottle right now. So like, a, but we we define like a the order for like a, this one and then stock. You know, I want the people coming my restaurant on Hana. So like a try out you know you know sushi omakase and then a champagne together. You know. Oh good. So, yeah. We're gonna yeah, order more. So beer, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna order more beer cart. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. looks like I'm gonna have to come for beer cart and the Ken roll. Yeah. 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 Well, is there yeah. anything else you guys want to share before we wrap up? Chef Ken, anything else you want to say? No, about it's sushi? A, I mean, like, if you have a question, I'm happy to answer it. Like, yeah, just, you guys, uh, if you have any questions, um, please comment now. Now is the time. You have Ken's ears and Clement's ears. You have two very, very knowledgeable gentlemen. Um, uh, what, can I say something, Emily? What, what of I course. Want to say, uh, first of all, happy holidays, everybody. Um, because you know it's been a it's been a let's say unprecedented unprecedented year, uh, unexpected year. It's not over yet. Who knows what can still happen? But a lot has happened. We don't need to talk about it. But it's been a emotionally uh, intense and full uh, year 2020. And there are a few things that remain uh, trustworthy and consistent. And mm -hmm. I want to say that champagne is one of them. You know, I still see a sparkle in people's eyes, um, you know, happiness and smiles when it comes to drinking champagne. Not only beer cart, any champagne, but uh, a little more with Bilka. Uh, and um, it seems to be, you know, uh, at least through, through the pandemic, it's, it, makes, it makes people happy. Yes, and, I agree. Um, one, you know, I, I, I work, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to work for Bilka Salmon. We, we have a lot of ambassadors and, and, and great chefs that, uh, that work with us. But with the pandemic, we haven't been able to, to go out in restaurants anymore, really, uh, and have these experiences. And to me, great sushi is one of the few things that even if you like do it at home and, and, and have a trustworthy restaurant where you can pick up, um, you, can, you can still have a really high quality experience. Uh, pick your right champagne. And um, and do it. I've done this myself personally a few times, and uh, I think it's it's something for for the season. It's very festive that uh, I we, we encourage you to do. So if you and if you're in the Bay Area, of course you should come pick it up from 
from Ken here uh, or Pabu in, uh, in, in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for saying that, Clement. And I, I, I did wear red to be festive. I don't know if you guys could see. I've got my tree back here. So <laughs> I'm celebrating the holidays too. Um, Happy holidays. And hopefully this provided a little bit of entertainment, some joy, some education. I'm really sorry for everybody that was at home having FOMO, but I mean, hello, you should have ordered sushi, but you can still order sushi and you can be inspired next time you order sushi. Now you know exactly you know, what to pair with. And the thing I love to say about pairings is nothing's, you can't mess it up. Like anything that tastes good to you is the proper pairing. So whenever like wineries or restaurants are like, oh, you shouldn't pair that with that. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's just whatever you enjoy. So whether you're a rosé gal or the Brut Nature, I'm actually both, um, you can't go wrong. And so, then we can actually recap uh, our, our, our personal favorites from the, this experiment. So, because yes. I, I think it's interesting, we had so many. Um, so we started with Brut Nature, which is our new cuvee, 100% uh, zero dosage, Pinot Meunier driven, 40%, 30% Pinot Noir, 30% Chardonnay. We had four pieces of sushi with it. Okay. Well, I, to me, the best, and I kind of knew it, but is is uni. Uh, the, the uni. Uni. The uni uh, sushi was uh, was was fantastic, and 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 then we had the rosé, which is our, our flagship wine, which is the to go for me wine for for sushi, and um, the special uh, special torched uh, king sap from from chef was. Um, was uh, really mind blowing to me uh, as far as the pairing. Uh, so, what, what were yours? I mean, nothing I don't like in you know, everything is you know match really well. And then, uh, like I, you know, I finished everything already. Well, <laughs> I know I'm still working. I guess I ate slow. Well, you guys yeah. had a break from the camera. The camera was always on me, and it's not that fun eating with a camera in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's, a, it's amazing. You know, this is a, one of my favorite things right now. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you yeah. guys for your time because I know this took a lot of planning and organizing. And you guys, for those of you that don't know, like we had a bunch of calls to strategize and plan. So um, I really appreciate you guys sharing your evening with me and sharing your beautiful food and your beautiful wines. Um, I, can't, I couldn't think of a better... This is actually my last Instagram Live in 2020. So you guys, thank you for bringing in 2020 together clement you basically kicked off instagram lives in an early shelter in place and we're wrapping it up together hey, it's, it's a it means something he has a he has a calling yes well i'm gonna continue for 2021 so the, the, you know we can do this again there's no limit and um i hope you guys ha you know get home safely and have the rest of your evening is delicious as delicious as his pairing which is probably not possible yeah. <laughs> Happy holidays, Emily, and again, a big thank you for, for of course time with us. And, um, thank you. Let me get a picture of you guys together. I'm going to do a screenshot before we end this for the YouTube. Oh, and if anybody missed this, this will also be on my YouTube account, Jet Setting Fashionista. Oh, I love it. Okay, smile. Yeah, I'm Let smiling. me do one more. I got to get a bottle, too. Hold on. This is really hard to do. <laughs> Okay. All right, everybody. Farewell. Good evening. And thanks again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, Emily. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye -bye.